this week I realised that I am horribly behind schedule on my reading list. I am trying to read 40 books this year, currently. I've read 8. This currently amounts to 20% of the target and we are currently a lot more than 20% of the way through the year. Much panic. But instead of spending time reading and actually catching up a bit, I'm doing this. Looking back at some of the books that I've read this year and making no new progress. Such logic. Hello, it's me again. The last time I did one of these booky videos, I didn't half waffle on. I think I've talked about 10, maybe 12 books. This time there shall be none wafflings. Of course there'll be wafflings if you met. Me, I'm like Waffle Central. But I'm only talking about three books. Quality, not quantity. Book number one is one that I haven't finished reading yet, so no spoilers if you have, because la la la, I'm not listening. It is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Mm? I'm probably doing a horrible job of saying her surname, and I'm sorry. It's set in a suburb of Cleveland where everything is planned and there are rules and everybody sticks to them and everyone has happy, successful lives. Eleanor is a happy, successful resident who has lived there for all her life and raised her family there. And then along comes Mia, who is an artist who has a completely different lifestyle and doesn't seem to fit into any of the rules and basically seems like the least likely person to want to settle there. And Eleanor's and Mia's kids become friends, which means that the two women are thrown into each other's lives and something happens that causes Eleanor to start snooping around in Mia's past. And that's about as far as I've got so far and it's about to get so, so good, I can just tell. Book two is Nutshell by Ian McEwan, which if for no other reason you should read because of the narrator. It's a story that is told from the point of view of an unborn child inside its mother's womb. And if that's not bonkers enough for you, the baby's mother and his uncle are planning to kill his father. And the baby is like this accidental witness who hears everything that they're planning but can do nothing to stop it. As well as being an interesting idea executed in a kind of bonkers way, it's also extremely well written. This is the opening paragraph, which I probably won't do justice, but you get a gist. So here I am, upside down in a woman, arms patiently crossed, waiting, waiting and wondering who I'm in, what I'm in for. My eyes close nostalgically when I remember how I once drifted in my translucent body bag, floated dreamily in the bubble of my thoughts through my private ocean in slow motion somersaults, colliding gently against the transparent bounds of my confinement. The confiding membrane that vibrated with, even as it muffled, the voices of conspirators in a vile enterprise. That was in my careless youth. Now, fully inverted, not an inch of space to myself, knees crammed against belly, my thoughts as well as my head are fully engaged. I have no choice, my ear is pressed all day and night against the bloody walls. I listen, make mental notes, and I'm troubled. I'm hearing pillow talk of deadly intent, and I'm terrified by what awaits me, by what might draw me in. Whoa. If only that train hadn't arrived at that dramatic point. Book three is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood, which is a book that just everyone should read. I read it because of my book group. I'm not sure if I would have picked it up otherwise, but now I want everyone to read it so I can talk about it with them. It's set in Midwestern America, starting in about the 70s, and it follows two characters, Wavy and Kellen, for about 15 or 20 years. Wavy is a little girl who's the daughter of a meth dealer, and Kellen is, I think, in his early 20s when the book starts, and he is one of her father's thugs. Both of them have pretty crappy lives with pretty crappy families and so when they meet each other an inevitable friendship develops and then as the years go on that friendship develops into something more. And that's about as much as I want to say without spoiling it for you but I just I implore you to read it. I certainly went into it with a mindset of this is where my boundaries are, this is what I think is right and what is wrong here are my clearly defined lines. And those boundaries and clearly defined lines were squeezed and pushed and generally punched in the face. I was made to question whether or not what I thought was right. If I ever wrote a book, I think I'd want people to come away and say that. That they would want everyone to read it and that it was a book that made them think. I reckon I could do the making people want others to read it, but I'm not sure about the thinking. I'm not very deep. It's kind of surface level fluff going on. Anyway, that's the end of the book review. It's not really a punchline or a joke to end on. So we'll just go to the end bit. Okay, bye. Hi again, my name's Rebecca and I post a new video every Wednesday. I am in desperate need of book recommendations in order to hit this year's target. Admittedly, I do have 
one, two, three, four, five books in my eye line of things that I need to read, but bring on the recommendations because I need to pick up the pace. My battery is flashing, so I really am gonna have to wrap things up now. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week, but in the meantime, please remember to work hard, laugh harder, and always accept a hug.